Hello and welcome back to another uh, amazing day for us to take some time to acknowledge some really amazing people. I honor you for showing up for you and taking the time to wanting to find that one little thing that can make you just a little bit better in sales. I have somebody really special that I want to bring up and introduce you to. Uh, Rebecca is a badass and she has such an amazing, fun, quirky personality that if she is not in the room, you notice. And um, I met this beautiful woman, you know, months and months ago and just watching her develop from where she was, um, even just not just in a sales aspect, because I feel like sometimes we focus on just like people's skills, but like just her ability to lead and lead others. Um, when she first started working with elite saleswoman, I know that she was at a setting position wanting to close and we were preparing her and I'm going to let her tell her story. But now she's full time closing. She's also trained other people to set for her and she is moving on up. So I'm going to bring her up to the stage. So Rebecca, hello. Hey. Hi there. Hi, Queen. You and your amazing lipstick as always. Well, you know, I had to. If I was going to do an interview, the red lipstick is on. It's a lot. She really does full red lipstick at 7 a.m. in the morning. And then we get this experience. It's really amazing. Um, thank you. I appreciate you. Um, Rebecca, tell me your experience because I feel like maybe somebody here is watching that is a setter that wants mm -hmm. to become a closer. And there's like this part in between where there's this imposter syndrome where they're like, oh, I really want to do that, but I just don't know. Or they're like, maybe one day or maybe they get to close and they mess up a little bit they go back to setting and they go back and forth which was me i did that mm -hmm. um what your experience so far like from the beginning setting and now you're closing and teaching other setters like how you really got there yeah um well i really stumbled into setting even from that point of view very by accident um i was honestly looking just for an off-ramp for the job that i had at the time which because of the pandemic had basically wound down to nothing. Um, but when I first started setting, it was very awkward. It was very, what the heck am I even doing? I didn't understand if it was even viable. Um, but it became really clear to me that for the longer term vision, I had to aspire to become a closer if this was going to be something that was going to accomplish what I wanted to do from a financial position and like just like a fulfillment position as well. Um, I really thrive off of connecting with people one on one in like this kind of a setting as opposed to constantly being in the DMs. DMs yeah. are cool, but like this is way better in my opinion. Um, but my journey was definitely rocky. I sat for an extended period of time, like eight months, and I was like just chomping at the bit to like start closing. Got access to some closing calls, definitely had a rough go of it took a break, went back to setting. And then just like over the past, I want to say like four months, have gone full time closing again and have felt really steady in it, which has been really awesome. Yeah, I, uh, I'm really proud of you. I know that the other day you came onto our call and you were saying something like it was like the first or the second and you already had all your bills paid for the month. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that was wild. Um, I'm like a huge budgeting person. I always have been. I just track my money. It makes me feel safe. It makes me feel secure. It makes me feel like in control, um, which is something that I enjoy. Um, but I was doing it because I got paid on the first when it was February. So it must have been last month. And the paycheck that came across literally and i'm not saying like gravy money but it was enough for me to allocate all my funds and pay all of my bills for that month my rent my groceries like all of my expected expenses were covered and it was the first day of the month and i just like i don't know why that hit me so differently because it's not even like the paycheck was like exponentially higher than the one before it was just like at the beginning of the month i had all my bills paid yeah. and to me, that just that it's not just like a money thing. It's like that means that I'm performing in my role. I work with my sister, so I'm performing well for her. I'm performing well for our clients. Like it was like I just freaked out, quite yeah. honestly. No, I'm really proud of you. And I feel like a lot of women in here that are possibly watching this right now, I know for myself, like when you don't have 
money to know if you're going to pay any type of bill, right? There's this level of, I don't feel safe. And um, I've experienced that many times in my life, you know, to where, you know, I don't want any women to experience it. So it's really cool because there's a new level of like a breath of fresh air when you have money in your bank account or when things are taken care of and you're like, oh, I'm safe. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, yeah. I honor you for getting there. You know, um, the beginning of when we first started working together and me listening to you on a sales call, uh, my experience of you was very awesome. 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 Oh my God. Awesome. Like ultimate cheerleader. It was, yeah. Hoorah. You know, uh, mm -hmm. so, you know, how was selling like that? Like what results were you getting? And then what was your experience going through you know, elite saleswomen and being a part of this environment and how has it kind of changed everything for you, like learning this this new style of sales? Yeah, because like this wasn't even my first stab at trying to learn the craft by any stretch of the imagination and like no ill things to say about the other people that I've learned from. But I think there were just key pieces missing and that's why I was looking for a solution in the first place because um, I'd kind of hit this point where I had stagnated in my growth and I just knew that if I had everything I needed to get to where I wanted to go, I would already be there. Yeah. So the pieces that you offered with the tonality and really the demeanor tweaks, right? Because I think that scripts can be really helpful from like a tactical perspective, but it can be a lot harder to communicate like how you hold yourself in a call, mm. you know? Yeah. And I think that's been a huge twist for me. Like that's been a huge ratchet to like making my success so much more stable than it has been in the past. Okay, hold on. So because I like what you just said. This is really interesting. You're saying that you've been having consistent success, right? Because I think that's that's big. Because I feel like so many times we're on a roller coaster, we're like, oh God, it's a great month. Oh, hello. Oh, okay. So but you said your consistency was connected to you, you feeling like you can hold yourself on a call. What do you what do you mean by that? Well, I think before I enrolled in an actual program and like actually made because it's like a money investment, obviously, but also made the commitment to spend the time. My delivery was very all over the place. It really depended on like what mood you caught me in that day. If I could have access to an office because I was using a co-working space for a while. Like there were a lot of things that were messing with the way that I was showing up to a call. And so when I was given more explicit instruction on like this is how you center before a call. This is the energy that you're going to bring into that room. That was super helpful because like I can say the same piece of a script 18 different ways. If I can hold myself in a way that is caring and authoritative and like in service, yeah. that's where I think the biggest change has been is in the consistency of the way that I'm showing up. Yeah. You know, I feel like you've been able to show up so much powerfully as a woman and as a leader as well you know, us purposely bringing things up to the surface and, and looking at them and be like, okay, let's move this and change this like internally. And part of me, as I tell my daughter, quiet, hold please. You know, I feel like, uh, cause you've taken the chance and the time to help develop yourself as a woman. And it's shown up so powerfully because I feel like the, the girls in the group look to you now, you know, like, like they look to you for like, oh, she's doing it today. Or like, oh, she just closed this set. Like you inspire so many of the other girls. And it was by you continuously showing up. Like I've always saw you like every single role play at the beginning, you know, you were like, oh, here, let's move here. Like, what else can I do? Like craving that, that extra touch. I feel like sometimes when you're learning sales or when you're learning from anyone, there's not that additional touch that I feel like is really important. Did you ever do any dance, um, Rebecca? Anything like that? No, figure skater though, if that counts. Okay. Figure skater counts. Okay. So like, and figure skating, I don't know if they do this, but in ballet, they're like, turn your foot out, right? Where you're like, maybe you're doing a spin and they'd be like tighter, right? Something like that. Uh -huh. Yeah, 100%. Like, right. So it's the same thing. I feel like when you're coaching sales, uh, I feel like it's hard to tell them after the fact. It's easier to abrupt them in the moment 
and like change the habit, right? So when you're going to do a spin and figure skating, you turn inwards, right? Is it out? It's like, oh, tighter, higher, bend your knees. Like you're getting that instant feedback to help you better. And I feel like that helped you because you were saying awesome a lot in your calls. And as soon as you're like, hey, we said awesome, you're like, oh, okay. I think yeah. you And, um, you know, I've heard your tonality and and the way you are with the other girls now. And I've, I've listened to some of your sales calls and I'm just like, who is this? You know, um, night and day. So I'm really, really proud of you for what you've been able to create for yourself. It's really awesome. Thank you. Well, and like, I appreciate it too, because now that you say it, like uh, in the other training programs that I have been in, it's been a lot of post review. And I think there's still value in that. Don't get me wrong. But I think you're right. Like having the the in the moment, like, and to calm down, do it again. <laughs> yeah, was really helpful. Yeah, no, I think um, I think more and more people get to experience this. And can you explain to everybody exactly what you do? Because I, I, I love the company that you know, you work for. I love what your sister's doing. I like that you have everything as a game. And everyone gets to own stuff and it's like cute. And isn't there, what is there a butterfly or a bee or what is there? There's a bee. Yes, there's very much a bee involved. But um, I work for the Coaches Plaza, which is a company that's owned by my sister, Amanda Kaufman. And we've been working to help coaches, cons- consultants, and like information product uh, businesses online really like get themselves out there and the program that we help people with in the most would be our level up program which is gamified like we've taken like all of the all of the setup that you really need to have inside of a business and we've attempted to make it fun because we've been in business for four years now and so what we found is like when we gamified it, you guys got into so much better implementation of like setting up your systems for lead flow and making sure that you actually have opportunity coming in the door so that you can actually have your gifts have an impact on the world. Um, yeah. And I, I have to say, I love our clients. Like they're fantastic human beings. And like typically what it is, is the person who comes to us is usually highly accomplished in another field. But this is just a different realm for them. And they don't even know where to start. So we get them their foundations really, really strong from like offer creation, lead generation, organic marketing, paid advertising, kind of the whole spiel, making sure that you've got like the whole system together, if that makes sense. No, I think it's great. I love it. I love what you guys do. I love that you actually take the time to um, create a creativity aspect of it i feel like as women we sometimes forget that we have full permission to be our our authentic creative selves and the fact that you have that only makes you guys more real and Mm -hmm. relatable and like people want to be in your realm because you're not like fake it till you make it thing like you're actually giving really tactics and like showing people you know what to do step by step um like they all do like full email automations and everything else like i love that yeah i feel like structure is what us ladies have such hard time with and then you make it fun and creative. Now we relate to it. So you took structure and analytic things and added creativity. And now we're like, oh, okay, I can relate, you know? Yeah, well, and it's funny that you say that because I know at one point you were talking a lot about like the masculine and the feminine. And Amanda was saying the exact same thing around the exact same time. And I was like, okay, universe, heard, understood, yep. gotcha. <laughs> yeah, no, I think you get to create the both and, you know? Um, mm-hmm. Like, I just really honor you. I honor you for your consistency with yourself with you showing up like I love that you're training other people how to do this now I love that you got the opportunity to be fully in closing I think you doubled your sales right coming in right yeah because like between like the my actual closing rate and like the number of calls that I've been able to book myself things have gotten so much more consistent because like the six to eight months before I came on with you guys I was doing um, three to five K and take home pay, but it was all over the place and I couldn't tell if it was going to be three, if it was going to be five, it was going to, there's like an odd six in there. And it was just that like inconsistency that even if I had a good month, I was still on edge. So where I am now is like, I see that I'm like saving money month over month and it's because the income has increased and because it's consistent, I don't feel like I need to like be all over the place anymore i feel a whole lot more safe yeah where i'm at now 
I want every woman to feel like that. I want every woman to feel safe. Mm -hmm. You know, um, sales is such a beautiful opportunity, beautiful career. If you have the right skills, you can literally go anywhere. So like, I, I honor you for learning this. Like, is there anything that you would say to like any woman that's watching this right now that, you know, maybe wants to become a sales rep one day, or maybe she was a setter just like you. And she's like, oh, I want to know if I have what it takes to do it. Like, what advice would you give her? Because you, you worked at this, you've been saying six to eight months, even to get it to where it's like consistent, where you, yeah, I would say to her where she's like, man, like trying to figure this out. Yeah. I think my biggest words of advice, because like, I think this is where I've had a bit of an edge is that I know that in my bones, I'm going to figure something out. Mm. You know, like I I don't have any qualms. I know I'm smart. I know I can figure things out. I know I'm capable. If you can feel that way about yourself for a moment, like, is this actually something you want? And if yeah. the answer is yes, then you should go for it. And quite frankly, my journey even with as long as it's been, has definitely been shortened by the fact that I got mentorship. And I think it would be hypocritical of me to say that getting mentorship is not the best way because it's what I preach in our own business as well. Yeah. Um, not only are you going to learn more quickly, you're going to learn from someone who's been there. You're also going to end up connecting with women who want to walk alongside you. And I think for me, that's a huge piece of it as well, because if you're wanting to start like an online career, it can be really isolating. It can be super lonely. So creating that container of peers is so important if you want to actually be in this for the long haul and you're ready to put the work in. Yeah. Okay. Let's talk about that because I remember you saying where were you going to a co-working space and then you did it and then you were like alone at home and you're like oh like i need to do stuff and then you did it like and then you know i know that the community that we have is really really important for you like you love showing up every morning you love like having people around you that are like hell yeah let's go red lipstick you know mm -hmm. what was it for you like have you been able to figure out what to do with the co-working space or like have you been able to recharge by the in the morning like yeah so, so uh, so what's going on is when I started closing, I started doing a lot more calls, right? Okay. So the co-working space became less appropriate because there's a lot of shared spaces, not a lot of like alone spaces that would like allow me to actually focus. Because if I'm in a call, I want to be dedicating my, my full attention to that person. And so like that became less of an option because I was actually doing better at my job. So that was interesting. So what ended up happening is I'm home. This is my fireplace. Um, and I've been working all by myself. And I think that I'm an extroverted person. I like to say I'm a shy extrovert. So initially, maybe quiet. But once there's context, I'm good. And like, this yeah. is going to be a great time. We're going to have a lot of fun. Um, but being at home and learning to have the discipline to still show up in the way that you would in any office, I think that's a whole skill set in and of itself. And I'm sure like anyone who's had who's transitioned to working from home is understands that. I'm sure it's not just me. Yeah. Um, but that's been a whole thing. And having like the morning meetings just to like get things started on the right foot has been super helpful. And to actually see like what other women are doing. Cause I think for me, I hold myself to like a really high standard, right? And it's really easy for me to beat up on myself that I'm not already like a thousand percent there. But to like see other women walking the path and realizing like, no, this is this is normal. This is the pace. This is like to be expected. And like everyone has their stuff. Everyone has their struggles. It's not just you. Yeah. It really helps when you do have like those lower moments to just keep going. Well, I like that. I like that a lot. Um you know, if there are anybody that doesn't understand what, you know, Rebecca's talking about. So every morning, Monday through Friday, we have a like 30 minute like morning sesh. And the mm -hmm. intention behind it was exactly what you said. A lot of people didn't have big sales teams. And I used to have few really big sales teams. And when you got there, it used to be like a whole hoorah, like, oh, yeah, like get your stuff together. Let's fucking go. You know, I was like screaming. Yeah, it was kind of great. Sometimes I was all up for it. Sometimes like I was like, you know, emotional that day and I didn't want to hear that. You know, like sometimes it did not serve me. And um, I was like, what would it look like if we had like a supportive like sales meeting at the beginning of every day so that we could feel good? But you said something that was really interesting. 
you just said that some days you don't feel like it. You feel you feel like you have a breakdown and, and you want to know that other people are having breakdowns too. And that helps. We're all so fucked up in our own messy way. Like we're all human. And this group gives full permission for you to be vulnerable and um, be like, hey, I'm having a moment. I don't know how many t- tears we've had on these morning meetings. Like, hey, someone's having a moment. Uh, not every day, not every day, but I'm just saying that we all have it. And it's so nice when you have people that have your back. So, yeah, no, I uh, I appreciate that. And I like your fireplace and your little elephant back there. Right, right. Like the plant is planting like life is good. Um. <laughs> But like the ladies in that group as well, like the the women that you have you've admitted into that space are yeah. all of like such an amazing caliber as well. Like yeah. that law of proximity thing is so important. I like blew up my life a few years ago when I started this whole journey and just like exited some people that were not serving me. So having the opportunity to add in the good is also yeah. a really awesome opportunity. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, I uh, I appreciate you. Rebecca, do you have any other things you want to say to anybody here about any stuff or about you or anything that you want to leave on the table and we'll drop a mic for us? Yeah, I think honestly, my my biggest piece of advice is that if this is something that you're seriously considering pursuing, get community around you, whether that's mentorship, whether that's peers, whether that's whatever that looks like, get people around you that are walking the same path because Mm. it's only going to let you go farther Mm. and not saying that they're walking the same path but are actually doing it right Mm. yeah that's that's a big differentiator yeah because you know there's so many groups that are like mindset groups but like everyone's like preaching mindset and they're like you know making two thousand dollars or less a month and they're like yeah but we're like hoorah you know you can do it too i've been around that too so like when you take advice from somebody make sure you'd be willing to switch places with them and get around people that are wanting to make money. If you're around more people that are making money and doing it in a way that's fast, like with integrity. Yeah. Okay. And I think and I think the other thing too is that like you wanting money isn't a bad thing. Yeah, I agree with that. I you know? know. Like I feel like with women specifically, there's such a like whenever you look at the stuff you see online about how to like save money, how to like you know do do things with your money as a woman usually it's budgeting it's saving it's couponing you actually making money isn't at the expense of anybody else and it's okay to want that i agree yeah hell yeah let's make it rain Mm -hmm. (laughs) so make it rain the sales dollars Uh, so uh, i appreciate you so much rebecca i hope you have an amazing day i know that they have right here your the coaches plaza if anyone wants to get connected to your back right right here yeah yeah right. if yeah if you're a coach and you're looking for marketing advice and like putting an offer together things of that nature um we do trainings every tuesday at 4 p.m central so that's a really good way to get to know us and get some value yeah there you go awesome i appreciate you so much love you i hope that you have an amazing day bye babe. <laughs>